The, the way they always like to start is so if you could hold your badge up so we see your name, it's always a really good way. Okay. Yeah, so this is it. Yeah, so this is uh, which Raban Raban Bastola, Bastola. from Nepal. Yeah, so I wonder if you could tell tell us a little bit about what you do, and what the organisation you work for, and, and what you do. Uh, I work with Resource Center Network Nepal, and I'm a national coordinator for this organization. And this network uh, basically uh, do uh, the sharing of knowledge uh, in wa wash sector, the water sanitation and hygiene sector, as well as capacity building of uh, these network partner organizations in terms of their uh, information management systems at their organization. Right. And when you say sharing of water and sanitation knowledge what what kind of what kind of knowledge is that you know what kind of information is that what sort of things is it about that you're sharing yeah it's uh, very tricky uh, while we talk about knowledge sharing uh, so uh, while we talk about knowledge sharing it comes from the data and then making it into information and then really making it as a knowledge base so that it can be shared and replicated. Well, what sort of information, what kind of things, are you, what, what kind of skills or what kind of understanding are you trying to share with people? Uh, we try to uh, share things like how uh, we can best uh, publicize or disseminate the technologies that are really adaptable in our context, yeah. the local context, as well as they are really fit the needs of the poor people. So could you give us some examples of the kind of technologies you're talking about? Yeah, but in Nepal we have been promoting the ecological sanitation toilets. We call it mal charfi in Nepali. So it's the urine diverting toilet. So it's a very simple, uh, a simple concept. Uh, people have, uh, in the agriculture country like Nepal, they yeah. really use it, the urine and feces. If we can divert uh, it and make it uh, usable in the farmland, so yeah. that's that's the one idea we have been sharing and just. Uh, now, I saw ecological toilets when I was in, in southern India um, about two years ago, and it was, it was really interesting, but there's some particular issues to do with how people culturally get used to the idea of an ecological toilet, aren't there? Yeah, it's very difficult to convince all of the people from the uh, various ethnic groups in Nepal as well, but uh, uh, we need to sort out... Uh, which ethnic group people are really uh, adopting the, those technologies? Uh, some people are scary about using the faces and, and urine yeah. uh, because of that, uh, the cultural uh, and traditional taboos. Yeah. So we need because, to... Because just to, 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 to explain to people that don't understand, so an ecological toilet tends to separate urine from the, the feces and it goes into a different... and it, it sort of goes underground and it's left... It, it goes through a natural process, doesn't it? That, that yeah, means that it's well, a year or so, is it six or months or a year later that it can yeah, be used as fertilizer yeah, and things e like that? E exactly. Uh, we, we are trying to convince them uh, with the technical backup, the scientific backup, that the fish is, uh, when it uh, is being separated from urine and just uh, kept inside an anaerobic condition, that it will be uh, disinfected, the microbial die-off will be uh, very, uh, very, very good in con good condition, so that it will be harmful to people when it, they use it. So but we are trying to make people... Uh, Convinced, on this. and a lot of the time they don't believe it. Yeah, uh, no, not not exactly uh, like that. But uh, people are mostly uh, educated nowadays, yeah. and people one way or other will be informed in different way yeah. uh, that people are convincing. A bit more so, people. typically, in in the areas you're working in in Nepal, what kind of sanitation facilities will people, the kind of people you're and the kind of communities you're trying to. Um, help to educate here. What what are their normal sanitation facilities like at the moment? How will they typically work? What are the problems? Yeah, the the main problem is open defecation in Nepal, uh, and because of the open which, which means basically going to the toilet outside, toilet, toilet behind a tree, or behind the tree, or in the forest, or in the bank of the rivers. Yeah. 
So that's a scary thing. And because of that, uh, in Nepal, we are having a diarrhea and cholera epidemic this year. And how, how common is I mean, how common is this? So, so open defecation is... So it's very common in the rural areas. Uh, but in urban areas, it's not that common. Yeah. But in rural areas, it's very common. Would you say, uh, did you have any sense of the sort of typical, I mean, percentage of people that would... Yeah, uh, in rural areas, people uh, without toilets are more than 45 first, so uh, that means uh, they all go to the open defecation. It's yeah. a rough figure. Uh, yeah. It's not that exact. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, what, what sort of, um, so what sort of programs are you... How do you, at the moment... You, you were talking to us earlier about how it can sometimes be difficult to get the knowledge to the right places. And I, I wondered you know, what sort of activities you do to try and educate people on these kind of issues. So, uh, through a resource and a network, we are trying to capture uh, the knowledge base from all the sector stakeholders, like uh, the academia, yeah. the uh, INGO NGOs working on this sector, and the government people, and all the researchers that are on the ground. Uh, and the community people, the community-based organizations that are there. Yeah. We want to capture all those knowledge and information and we want to keep track of the gaps, what are the gaps uh, in there, uh, that they are not uh, being able to deliver the information or knowledge to the uh, people who are in real need of those sentences. Now, it's, it's funny because I'm, I'm here with uh, Luke. Luke Dickhorn Luke. from ACVO as well, and, and I know, you know, ACVO, we, we've been trying to share knowledge related to this between different institutions and draw knowledge out. It's quite difficult to get people to share knowledge, isn't it? Even though you would think it would be easy, you would think it would be much easier than it is. Yeah, it is very difficult to share knowledge, uh, that you are very correct, uh, but... Uh, it's a matter of fact that how we disseminate those knowledge, uh, we have to be very tricky uh, that uh, we can f so that we can present uh, knowledge or information uh, to them so that is really applicable to their, uh, so that they can practice. Yeah. Uh, if they can't practice, they, they, they can't disseminate, they can't uh, share it to others as well. So it, if you share with me one kind of information or uh, that is information to me. Well, if you share some information to me and I can disseminate that information to some other friends of mine, that can be a knowledge base for all of us. Yeah. yeah. I, I think there's a... Once, do, do you find that many of the institutions that you are, are trying to encourage to share knowledge feel that that knowledge is their main value? You know, the, the main purpose of that organization is to build up knowledge which is... You know, and, and 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 they're sort of reluctant, even though they want to transmit the knowledge to people, they're kind of they don't want to give it away or let go of it. Does this make any sense? So uh, we we need to be very clear that uh, we are doing the the good practices uh, yeah. being promoted in our context uh, is not universal. Nothing is universal. We need to contextualize in our own perspective. So we need to do some kind of research or development things, and then we do demonstration things, and then we, only we can disseminate. If that is not well demonstrated in our own context, that can be de disseminated. Yeah. The people want to accept it. That's the fact. Yeah, great. Well, that's, I mean, this is great. I think I'd really like at some point if we get the chance again to carry on with this conversation this week and maybe look at some other See aspects what, what of this. See what he's done this week. Um, yeah, it's, and let's, let's talk again later this yeah. week, but it's really interesting talking to you. It's, um, uh, it's really nice to talk to you and share my ideas and also my organization's uh, activities. Great. So, uh, Robin, thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you very much as well.